What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to Game Day with Trey. Of course, this is your host, Trey. And today, we're going to talk about this NFL Sunday afternoon matchup between the Indianapolis Colts and the Chicago Bears. All right, so this game will be played at 1 p.m. East Coast time on September 22nd. Uh, the line is set right now at the Colts minus two. And some places you can get the Colts minus one. Over under set at 42 and a half. Some other places you can get it at 43 and a half. All right, this game will kick off at Lucas Oil Field in Indianapolis. Uh, the Bears are looking to look to bounce back after their struggles in the last game, man. Uh, in the first game of the season, the Bears were able to, to secure a 24-17 victory, but in the last game, the offense wasn't as good. Well, really and truly, the offense was pretty good in the last game, in my honest opinion, man. It's not that the offense wasn't as good in the last game, it's just that the Houston Texans defense was great out there. They played good football out there, and on top of the, the Houston Texans playing good football out there in that last game, um, I saw a lot of growth from Caleb Williams, all right? I saw Caleb Williams in front of my eyes grow up as a player on the field. Now, what he did after the game, that is not, that, that, that's not gross. That's, that's uh, going backwards, all right? In my honest opinion, that's stagnation, okay? Uh, you should always be open or humble enough to take uh, good advice from anyone. Uh, I mean, a blade of grass you can learn from, in my honest opinion. So, I, I don't agree with that part. But uh, anyway, back to <laughs> back to the game, man. So, uh, but the Texans were able to knock them off, nineteen uh, thirteen. Uh, the offensive line for the Bears is bad. We all knew that, and uh, Caleb Williams got hit a lot of times. Okay which is why I felt it was a good learning experience for him. It was a good welcome to the NFL experience for him, okay, in my opinion. Uh, Williams finished the game completing 23 of his 37 passes for 174 yards, zero touchdowns, and two interceptions. Some of the problems were, uh, were his fault, but the offense didn't do any favors either, man. All right, like in the game, if the Bears are going to find success in this game, they're going to need to keep their quarterback upright. Now, whether that be through actually running the ball on a consistent basis or, you know, wide receivers getting hit at the right time, because in my opinion, uh, he missed a lot of throws. Uh, DJ Moore was open uh, on a lot of plays, okay, and he missed him a couple times in that last game and then on top of missing him a couple times in that last game he was just I, his, he wasn't making it through his progressions um he wasn't reading the defense and in turn making the proper adjustment adjustments with his offensive line and the proper calls so that he could slide protection like there's a lot of different things i saw in that game but um anyway on to the colts now the Colts had high expectations heading into this season, uh, but so far it's been mostly a disappointment. In, in, in the first game, the Houston Texans against the Houston Texans, they uh, they were defeated twenty nine to twenty seven, and in the last game against the Green Bay Packers, it was even worse. Uh, like Green Bay just ran the ball down their throat. Josh Jacobs, salute you, brother. Uh, I uh, literally, my Lafleur. That was a hell of a coaching job. That was a hell of a coaching job. How, uh, how on God's green earth did the Colts allow them to do that? That says a lot. That says a lot about where your coach is right now, man. But anyway, Green Bay Packers ran all over. And in the first quarter, the Colts were down 10 to nothing, and they couldn't bounce back on the way to that defeat. Anthony Richardson looked like trash. He looked like not, he looked worse than Rusty. He looked like straight basura, all right? And he, he completed 17 of 34 passes for 204 yards, one touchdown, and three interceptions. Three interceptions. Now, that comes from exactly what I said the problem was prior to the game, which is the fact that Anthony Richardson does not have experience like that, man. 
you know, his, he didn't get to play enough at Florida. I wouldn't have, like, he's, yeah, he's an athlete, guys, but you got to be able to throw the ball. You got to be able to read the defense, man. If you can't do that, you're going to get yourself hurt or you're going to throw interceptions, and that's what's happening. Now, Jonathan Taylor had a strong game on the ground, rushed 12 times for 103 yards, completely underused or underutilized considering the situation where the team that they're playing is doing nothing but running the ball. So, like, that's... Uh, like, you, you, when you're trying to play catch-up and you're making Anthony Richardson drop back 34 times, you'll never be successful. Never. All right? Uh, the defense had some major issues against the run, uh, like I just told you. And Josh Jacobs, yeah, he rushed 32 times for 151 yards. All right, and that was what a hurt back. <laughs> and uh, the defense is going to need to do a lot better against this Caleb Williams-led uh, team. Because at the end of the day, Caleb Williams can play and spin that ball way better than Malik Willis. They're not going to, like... They're not going to run into that same game plan that they just ran into. And that could be a major issue for the Colts in this game. Okay. Especially when you look at the numbers that Caleb put up in that last game. Right. So when you just look at the last game and you look at uh, the stats. So Caleb went 23 for 37 for 174 yards with two interceptions. Okay. Caleb also ran the ball five times for 44 yards. And Caleb threw the ball successfully six of those times to uh, DJ Moore, which, like I told you, he could have hit DJ more times than that. And DJ only caught, 50, caught it for 53 yards, but DJ really should have had over 100-something yards in that game, man. Like, he missed some real opportunities in that game. All right, now, as far as uh, how the time possession, Chicago had the ball 31 minutes and 13 seconds when they played the Texans in the game. But at the end of the day, the Texans both had 15 first downs equal to Chicago, and Chicago had two turnovers to the Texans one. Then the Texans outgained them 310 to 205. All right? And remember, out of that 205, 174 of those yards were Caleb Williams throwing the ball, and then 44 of them yards was him uh, running the ball, guys. So, like... At the end of the day, Caleb Williams was the whole offense, and he really didn't need to be because he, there was players out there trying to get open and get, like, he, he got, Caleb Williams has got to understand how to read the defense, or this is going to be a long season for him, man, a super long season for him. All right, so they went 6-17 uh, for 17 on third down in that game and uh, on third down efficiency, so they actually did better than, than Houston did. Houston went 4-14. for 14 on third down, alright, so like, there was a defensive battle, and that's what I, that's why I'm saying that Chicago has a chance uh, in this game against the Colts because I believe Chicago's defense is just better than the Colts' defense, but let's get into that, right, so as far as what the Colts did against the Packers, the Colts allowed the Packers to just run all over them, like I already told you, uh, we already know Josh Jacobs ran the ball 32 times for 151 yards, 4.7 yard average, 34 yard long, but Malik Willis got off on him, 6 carries for 41 yards, what I just tell you that uh, Caleb Williams can do, he can run the ball too, man, and then hold on, it gets better, then you had Jaden Reed, wide receiver, 2 times for 37 yards, like it, it gets, it's just, it's horrible, man. It's horrible. And then Malik Willis went 12 for 14 against him for 122 yards. We're talking about Malik Willis. Malik Willis, man. All right, so Anthony Richardson, we, we know he had a horrible day. His QBR was 29.1. His, uh, his, his rating on the day was 41.8. All right, he only rushed the ball four times for 37 yards. Like... He hit Alex Alec Pierce five times, fifty six yards, but he really didn't. He, he really didn't do much more outside of that. It was either Jonathan Taylor or people getting one pass. All right, now uh, Michael Pittman Jr. did have three receptions, but you can't get him three receptions for twenty one yards, brother. You got a full game to get this man the ball, especially when you drop back thirty four times, man. Like, yeah, yeah. 
All right, so when you look at this team and you look at these matchups, you got to look at the uh, the injury report first, right? So when you look at the injury report, who is sticking out in Chicago? First and foremost, you got Romo Dunze. He's probably, he's nursing that knee injury, but is expected to return to action against the Colts on Sunday. Of course, we already know Keenan Allen's still out with the, with the heel injury. Uh, Nate Davis is questionable. Uh, we, we have, there's a lot of injuries on the offensive line all over the place. A lot of people questionable. Montez Sweat and Divas line questionable. Nursing that elbow injury. Don't know if he's going to be able to make it out there. That'll be a big hit if he can't. Then you look over at the Colts. Michael Pittman Jr. questionable with the back injury. Unknown if, if he's going to make it to the Bears game. Matt Gay, quadricep questionable. Dealing with that quadricep injury. Unknown if he's going to make it to the game. Forrest Buckner was still on IR. Latu is questionable. Uh, tended to a hip injury. Known, unknown if he's going to play. Julian Blackman, he's questionable. Managing a shoulder injury. Josh Downs, wide receiver. He's questionable with the ankle. Managing that ankle sprain. Unclear if he's going to be able to make it out there. Like, there's, there's a litany of injuries all over the field for both of these teams, guys. Then we look at the matchup. So, uh, on the season, right now, Chicago's averaging 18.5 points per game. That's 18 in the NFL versus the Colts' defense is only giving up 22.5 points per game. That's the 20th best in the NFL. It means they are in the 20th spot and not the best. They are down at the bottom. All right, they're in the bottom 12 in the league. When you're talking about defense and points that they give up uh, to opposing teams. Then look, third down. Chicago on third down in the season is only converting 26.67% of their third downs. That's 27th in the NFL. All right. Whereas the Colts, the Colts are allowing 54.84% of third downs to be converted. That's 20, that makes them the second worst defense, the third worst defense against the, uh, the third down uh, in the league. Come on. Come on. Like you can't be successful like that. Then let's look red zone, right? So in the red zone, 50% of the time that uh, Chicago gets there, they score. That puts them 10th best in the NFL. The problem is that the Colts, when they allow you to get there, they allow you to get there, man. They uh, they they let opposing teams get 66.67%. Of opportunities for touchdowns successful when they enter the red zone. That puts them at 26th in the NFL. That's the sixth worst in the NFL. So that tells me if Chicago gets a chance to get there, they're going to get there. Now let's look at the inverse. Now the Colts. The Colts are only scoring 18.5 points per game, too. Same, identical with Chicago. So their defense, their offense is struggling. And Chicago's defense is only allowing teams to score 18 points a game. So that's a big problem for the Colts then. All right. Then you look third down conversions. Uh, the Colts are only converting 36.84% of their third downs. That's 18th middle of the pack in the NFL. Then you look at uh, Chicago. Chicago is only allowing teams to convert 25% of the third downs that they put up. Like, it's, so that means you get on third down one out of every four times, they're going to stop you. Plain and simple. So don't have a long drive. And if you do, you, like, you're not going to be able to do that all day. That's what it is basically telling me right there. All right, so that puts them as the third best defense against opposing teams on third down in the NFL, guys. Then we look at the red zone. Red zone, when the Colts get there, they score 60% of the time, so that's the seventh best in the NFL. But Chicago, Chicago only allows you to score 50% of the time, and that puts them at 18th in the NFL. So that means if the Colts can actually get the ball down the field, then they have a good chance of scoring. But they got to be able to get the ball down the field, man. Like, if you can't get the ball down the field, it ain't going to work. Plain and simple. So then when you look already at the stat splits, right? So in the last two games, all right, uh, already, like I said, when you're looking in this situation, Chicago only scores 13 points and gives up 19 points. The Colts in this situation at home, they score 27, but they they give up 29, you know? And that uh, that does not bode well for the Colts in this situation guys not at all man not at all 
So, the last 10 times these teams were actually on the field. All right? Chicago Bears were 6-4 and four in the last 10 times they were actually on the field, straight up. They're 6-2-2 two, and two against the spread, and they're 3 to the over, 7 to the under in the last 10 times that they've been on the field. All right, now, so far this season, uh, they are 1-1, one and one, okay, uh, when you're looking straight up, and they are uh, one and a push when you're looking against the spread. They've also gone under in both games, under 43 and under 45 and a half, guys. All right, they do have the Rams, Carolina, and Jacksonville coming up, so uh, it's really not too much to look ahead to, guys. When, when you're talking about that, now when you talk about the Colts, last 10 times they were on the, on the field, they're 5-5 uh, five and five straight up, 5-5 five and five against the spread, and 6 to the over, 4 to the under in the last 10 times that they were actually on the field. All right, so far this season, they are currently sitting at 0-2. And, and when you're looking at them uh, against the spread, they're 1-1. One and one. and over-unders, they're 1 to the over and 1 to the under. All right, that was over 47 and a half and under 41. All right, so there are key numbers to pay attention to in order to understand whether or not their games will go over or under. And they were against quality teams. And I'm telling you, Chicago is, despite what's going on with leadership and uh, their coaching and their quarterback's lack of maturity, they still are a team on the rise and a threat. I'm not saying they're going to make a playoff or nothing like that. That is definitely not happening. But, you know, they still are going to be able to shock a few people. So you got to take them seriously. And I honestly do not feel like the Colts defense is going to be ready. But we'll see, man. It's definitely still not played out. And, and I've still got a play to give you. All right. So head up these two teams. Uh, the Colts run it 3-2 to two straight up. They have run it 3-2 to two against the spread. And it's been 2-0 to the over and 3-0 to the under. The last time they played was back in 2020. So these are completely different teams, guys. Completely different teams. Nowhere near the same teams that they were back when they actually did meet each other last. So a couple trends to be able to pay attention to and understand. The Chicago Bears have scored first in 10 of their last 13 games. Whereas the Colts have hit the first quarter game total over in 14 of their last 20 games. Chicago Bears have covered the spread in 13 of their last 21 games. And the Colts have hit the game total over in 8 of their last 11 games at home. Now, the Chicago Bears have covered the first quarter spread in 9 of their last 11 away games. And the Colts have hit the third quarter game total over in 11 of the last 17 games. The Chicago Bears have hit the second quarter game total over in 8 of the last 10 away games. And the Colts have hit the team total over in 7 of the last 9 games at home, guys. The Chicago Bears have also hit the money line in 12 of the last 21 games. And the Colts have hit the first quarter money line in 7 of the last 11 games at home. Now... One more thing for you. The Chicago Bears have covered the first half spread in 13 of their last 20 games. So take that with a grain of salt. Understand what's going on. And uh, let me go ahead and just wrap it up for you real quick, man. I'm going to go ahead and give it to you like this, right? The Colts and the Bears, neither one of them trustworthy. Really don't like this game, guys. Uh, it's a bit scary betting on it. Richardson had turnover issues last game. Uh, so did Caleb Williams. Um, they, but he still has a few more years under his belt than Caleb Williams. But does that mean I trust him? No. Okay. I'm taking Caleb Williams plus the two or plus one. Or if I can get it in three points somewhere at a decent price, I'll take that. But I'm taking the Colts. I mean, not the Colts, the Bears plus the points. Uh, that's the only way I would play this game as far as what the spread is concerned when you talk about over-unders. Uh, the Colts defense is just so sorry, and the Bears defense is actually pretty good. So I really couldn't mess with anything but the Bears team total over, and that Bears team total over set at 20 and a half points. I believe somehow, some way, they'll be able to scratch and crawl, crawl and claw their way over that, guys. But I don't know. Uh, Y'all let me know in the comments. Uh, Y'all have a blessed day. Stay safe. 
Like, subscribe, and I'm going to holler at y'all. Peace.